Uh, sorry about that. I wasn't recording. It's okay. Coming back. Where was I? Okay. Pastor, I am a failure. Fete to Malaku. To Sabine. Who said you are a failure? Yet greater is he which is in you than he which is in the world. They don't say. For, uh, who told you? Because the Bible says, by the manifestation of truth, we commend ourselves in the conscience of men. Let God introduce you. Amen. Pastor, I am sick. I never got into him right there. By his stripes, you were healed. Pastor, and dear, we tell, because we fear thieves. Who told you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. That we are having two conflicts. One which says I am cursed against one which says you are blessed. Pastor, to live off. That's why every time we, we get jobs, we lose. But Jesus says that you became poor. He became what? Poor. For your sake that you may become what? Rich. Answer me. Are you poor or you're rich? Answer me. If you don't have 1,000 shillings, does it mean you're poor? Answer me. That, but that does that. Now somebody will say, um, Go out and look for a what? Go out and look for a job. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Am I preaching well? Now, I've shown an example of a stronghold and the knowledge of God. Somebody help me with it. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Now, having accepted their faith through such declarations, these thoughts then become what? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Clap for that one. Hallelujah. If you accept it, then they become a what? A stronghold. Hallelujah. If you really believe that you are sick, that's a stronghold. The mind. That's why I began by telling you, some of you, the power went off and I said, imagine I am white and brown. I like, no, no, they to couple. Anyway. <laughs> now, you can't win against this disobedient spirit because you're fighting from the place of defeat. You've entered in the presence of God as one which is poor. You've entered marriage as one which is at a malabo. You can't fight and, let me say something, you can't win. I, whether you pray 600 times a day, you, will, you, you won't. Every time you enter, you will come to live out to us. You will come to us. You will come to us. If there are two people that are sick, one is a believer, the body is paining them, yeah? and one is a non believer. Yeah? In the mind of God, you all pray, Mukama, heal us, right? The believer is praying for the same healing. Yeah? The non believer. He's also praying for, the, uh, for that, for healing, right? Yes. In the mind of God, who is sick? The non-believer is sick. Whom will he answer? The non-believer. For you are not sick. Now, this one is still disturbing very many people. Because you're fighting with present truth. The fact is, Abraham was nine, a hundred years. The fact is, by science, he couldn't what? The fact is, his wife was 90 years and barren. They couldn't have children. That was the fact. But also, what was the truth? Abraham, you're a father of what? Nations. And the Bible says, he was fully persuaded that the God who promised was able to fulfill. Because he, he stood on truth. He didn't come as one which was barren. No. All that Sarah needed was to conceive seed. You remember? To conceive seed which gave him the strength. And what is the seed? The seed is the word. The word of God. All Sarah needed was the word of God. Now, listen to me. You need to complete a certain obedience before you experience the victories and the true liberties of the what? Of the spirit. And I'm starting to preach now. It all starts in the mind. Because a stronghold is in the what? Mind. So it all starts in the 
mind. And that is where I want to bring us. Paul says in Romans 7, 25, I myself serve the, with my mind, I serve the law of God. Paul was very keen. I myself with my mind, I serve the law of God. How do I serve God? Where? Here. Because you can enter here with, with a part. With, <laughs> that's like this guy who said that. Toli mwavu. That guy said the right thing. And by the way, I was told that that guy failed a couple of times in the university. What? Every time you go to write a hotel, you start from the, the menu. Second Peter chapter 3 verses 1 the Bible says listen to me it says beloved I now write to you this second episode in both of which I stir up your pure minds by the way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken by the prophets stir up your pure minds that you may be mindful of the words in other words a pure mind is a mind that is full of the what? A mind that is full of the word. It's not an empty thing. Your mind is full of the word of God. I mean, ask us, how many of us have five scriptures in their mind? Poof. They only know, ah, oh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. <laughs> Everyone knows that one. Hallelujah. Is your mind full of the word of God? Or your mind is full of gossip. Or your mind is full of hatred. Or your mind is full of bitterness. Or your mind is full of failure. Or your mind is full of that situation. Every time you look up in the morning, you magnify it. Then you come and say like the other people that, hey, we saw the giants in the world, in the land, and we were as grasshoppers. No, we are like as grasshoppers in their sight, and so we we in their eyes. That they saw themselves as grasshoppers, Hoppers and saw the giants, saw them according as what? As grasshoppers. You can't buy a cloth, a shirt of 150,000 shillings. That shirt sees you as a grass. But you can never one day and say, okay, oh, this one of experience, at least this year, let me buy a shirt of 150,000. This thing that I put on, I like bragging about it, but I love it, it's old. But this thing was close to 180,000. I love it. It reminds me. And you put it in like shikabata. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> 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 I, I used to buy shoes of 20k. If I bought Bananga, it's 30 k I'm putting it on this Bananga, you bought Bananga. To get 180,000. I was saying some. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. You can't even buy a leaf. A kilo of leaf. Who can know the time? Who can, who can know the time? The liver sees you as a grass hope. <laughs> Every time you come into the market, balabachi, grass hope. Grass hope. <laughs> the Mokenes is the giant. The Mokenes is the what? Giant. Giant of the Oyaze. Kamenya Aze. Kamenya Tutuala. And the Wafi, we are one with him. Grasshopper. <laughs> you, you can't even buy a soda of 4,000 shillings. You're the Jewish of 500. 500, 500, 500, 500, Africa, 500. Eh? Wisdom. 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 <laughs> <laughs> How does elevate from a Kajuiso Bita? No. And buy yourself an honor of 25. <clears throat> I remember the first day I went and I saw CJ and they said, Bring me my milkshake. 17 bob. Now I go inside 17 pop. Hallelujah. Anyway, let's go back. 
But the moment your mind is conscious to the word of God, your mind is conscious only in the knowledge of God and what the, and what the word says, then you know that you've completed your obedience. The moment you know it, every time I am above, then you know you've completed your obedience. You don't have to fight against Satan. You only need to resist. Many of us want to fight battles that Jesus already fought. Shakata, I break, fire, I sin. You are fighting battles that Jesus already fought. Why are you fighting with somebody who's already defeated? Then God, Satan knows, oh, no, no. I want to tell you, man, you're no grasshopper. Let's hit this one. Now, Kuba Nanga Namukuba. Say now, Kuba Nanga Namukuba. You understand? Because Satan is saying, is an affair. But how come you are with? You understand what I'm saying? Are you getting me? How do you start fighting the one who's already defeated? The man has been put like this, but you're coming to hit it. Somebody has been tied. Eh? You've, what you want is, is there, right? Ali Wano, he's tied. Bamu Sibye. Now you're saying today. Today I have to first. You understand? Because the case is like. Anyway, the Montegate. The Montegate. The Montegate. Oh, you get the Numba. Sitani Bamu Sibye. Just walk. Mashekate. Zala for I thank you for my Zila. Bake. Rendele Bako Zapatari. I don't offer me. Isn't it? But now you're like. <laughs> you understand? He's defeated. Toma, you don't know who you are. How am I really making sense? It's the mind. Then you go and get a spiritual warfare and fight. Too many. Too many. But the moment your mind is conscious of the knowledge of truth, then you know that you've completed your obedience first. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter if you don't have a job. Wake up as one which has a job. Mm-hmm. Wake up as one as the best employee. Father, I think that I'm the best employee. You speak it and speak it and speak it and speak it. And that's why you should get a previous sermon. And speak it. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of them know. Oh, you got Muli busy. Muli busy. That to test me. I want to see if I want to see if she's my seed. Glory to God. Well, well, I make my condo has entered. Act as one with the job. Hallelujah. And then this is the moment for you to, sm- to dress the smartest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. When I want to wear your bread of life, you should see me by now. I prepare as one which is, has reached the whole world. And I hold that mic and I say, ah, and I speak like I'm speaking to the world. Amen. And I am in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because I have completed my obedience. First, I'm going to show you why. Because some things have been judged tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So you cannot wage war. You can't wage a good warfare without completing your obedience first. You can't. Now, 1 Timothy 1 verses 18, the Bible says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. According to the prophecies concerning you, use those ones to wage the good warfare. These prophecies to Paul were to Timothy an inspiration to fight the good fight. The prophecies with which what he received, the words that they spoke over his life, those are the words that he was supposed to use to fight. Hallelujah. They were an inspiration to help him to wage, to wage the good warfare. You remember what God told you. You remember the revelation you received. Oh, Karalaba. Then you use that very word to say, where is the jobless situation? So the revelations you have received upon the preached word from your man of God prepare you for such a time as this. Now, many of you, the many revelations you've been receiving have actually been preparing you for your situation now. Now. To fight. To fight. From the place of victory. We don't fight from the place of defeat. I fight from the place of victory. Because I'm not believing to get a job. I am fully persuaded that the job is mine. I'm not believing to get healed. I am fully persuaded. I wish you had called me. You should have seen. Mashallah, Bakay. I said, Father, I thank you for Dante. I thank you for his wife. In the Yanginda, by the way, I walk. I thank you for his wife, his five kids. Hallelujah. Then he. Because I've opened the wife's I've opened the wife's womb. Hallelujah. But I have broken 
the protocol. Glory to God. Because I fight with pers fully persuaded. Because I have completed my obedience first. They help you to fight for what is true. Many of you, the revelations you've been received, you've received in this ministry, they were just preparing you to fight. How does Plyth and Sharon begin to fight for their forthcoming wedding? Are they hoping to get married or they're already there? They have gone to the end. Never to sensing, never to testing, never come out. Say, Papa, hey, Leba, go on to legacy. Let me just take it. David was tied up by the prophecy that, that he received to wait the good war. Remember, Samuel came and anointed him as the king? That was in chapter 16. Then in chapter 17, he's going to fight. Now, according to what Paul was saying, according to the prophecies that you received, use them to fight. And David knew that he's going to use that he was anointed as king. Why could it be that everyone, even King Saul, would not fight against Saul? I mean, uh, the Goliath. But how come it was David? Are you understanding what I'm saying? And I want to give an example of David, of completing your obedience first. Now, David, you guys know the story. So you know the story. Okay, David... This man, Goliath, comes, he's a, very, he's a giant, he challenges the Israelites to pick one man to fight against him. That whoever wins, the one that loses, they will submit under the what? Under the, uh, the victor. So if Israel were to lose, they become slaves to the Philistines. If Israel were to win, the Philistines become slaves, right? And this guy was a giant. This man was a giant. I can't get a job. This thing was a giant. We are buried. This thing was a giant. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a giant, spiritual now. Because some of you, the things, some things are disturbing you that become giants in your mind. You just can't, you just don't know how to get them out of your life. You know you're broke, you've been broke, you're broke, I'm broke, I'm broke to live out. It has become a giant. You even don't know how to get out of it. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at that eh, with David. But they had a war of words. Very important. He had, a, he had a war of words with Goliath. And it was important that he completed his obedience. First for Goliath to say, you know what? I am ready. Okay, first ask me. How could a, a, a small stone kill Goliath? Just think about it. How? A small stone? Even me, I could not die. <laughs> it was God. Eh? Hey, hey, hallelujah. But you're failing, to, you're failing, not you. Now, let's start. He comes, and they're going to fight. Now, war of words, eh? the strongholds, and the knowledge of God. So the Bible says, So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cast David by his gods. Now we have begun. Pastor, I am cast. Pastor, they cast me. <laughs> the man said, I am cast. Papa has told me, I get it, church. There's a man of God who said that. And I, why I say it? Because I know it. Man of God told his son, who said, like, like Sharon comes and says, Papa, is a funny ministry. And that's a curse. Now, some of you, even parents, you've, been, you've had people tell you negative, because a curse is a negative word spoken. Yeah. You never, you never mount to anything. What do you those are curses, right? That's a stronghold. And you grew with that. Many of you have grown with those things that you were told. I told you about the told me to eliminate This can't here. The thing became a stronghold. You understand? That's why I call myself Adrian Love Duncan. The knowledge of God. You understand? That's where Ahava came in. Loved by God. 
You understand what I'm saying? You know what loved by? And dark and loved. And by the way, I'm handsome. I may be, I may be, I may look at a new side, but I'm handsome. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I am. I'm serious. With my, with my is. <laughs> because I chose to look good to myself. And that's when you look good. When, anyway. You know what These are three guys. Now, Sanga, Chan, and the Chinita. No, you know what I'm saying? I don't go Murunji. Where were they saying? Now, again, I'm with the Chinita. Anyway. <laughs> he cast David by his gods, stronghold. And the Philistines say to David, by the way, it's a war of words. Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the breasts of the field. You think he was stupid to first start by talking? Because the war begins here with the words. If I could just tell that man that by your money, I just need to have two pipes. Some of you are busy looking for gossip, gossip, and then you land on something they tell you, and that becomes a stronghold. Moving on, yeah. You, you, are, you want to get married, but your city among those that are not married, whose marriages have failed, they are speaking into your life. What do they say? You want to make money, you want to become rich, but your five friends that you sit with every day, the best they can raise is 1,000 things. <laughs> but you want to? <laughs> what jazz do they have? Then you find this stupidity, this myopic knowledge. Omsaja, who only earns 10,000 shillings, I in a proposal as they to a man who earns 50 billion Okumuwa knowledge on how to make money. I have a proposal. The guy only makes 10,000. I know one million. I'm a deal. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Do you get me? Eh? Yeah. How? The best you can do is 10,000 shillings. And you come into a man who makes 50 million. And you want to show him how to make money. I said, Sharon comes and tells me, Papa, I feel the anointing. Like the, near the, I want to spray over your life. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You find a pastor who is even the, the, the trousers and the things are, are cut. But they're telling you of how you should sacrifice your Isaac and God will bless you with all the riches. If you sacrifice your Isaac, God is going to bless you. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself, Neo no Musaja, who has a, a, a torn shirt, how come for him he didn't sacrifice his Isaac? How come for him, I take, I take at you, on, of the two of us, he's the one who looks like the one who needs money. Yeah. And you are... The church is so stupid. For a pastor, you go to his office, you will see that the office is lacking. You understand? But they... <laughs> Are you hearing me? Am I preaching well? Let's go quickly. So, listen. This is, this is David, yeah? He's fighting with Goliath. You're welcome, sir. Hallelujah. So, what is disturbing us are the negative words? Let's know that. Please know that to the negative words that are contrary to the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, notice David completing his obedience first. He says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He's now answering back with the word of God. I come to you in the name of God. Hallelujah. I come against that poverty in the name of what? I come against that divorce in the name of what? I come against that difficult situation in the name of what? God. Yes, they may fire me, but you know what? Eh, you come with that word in the name of what? So he says, okay, you want to curse me? It's okay, but I come in the name. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you defied. Now, let me say something there. Strongholds do not defy, they're not, they're, they're, they're not defying you. They are defying the Christ in you. They are literally saying, by the way, they are speaking, because they are spirits, eh? they are speaking to the one in you that you are poor. They are speaking to the one in you that you can't fail. Because they are defying the armies of the living God. So the Christ in you is when they are telling that you are poor. 
Because your life is of what? It's not I who lives, but it is Christ who lives. So when they say you are poor, they are talking about the Christ in you. Are you seeing why the battle is not yours? Because Jesus would say, oh, can you like a Amen. Amen. Okay. I am poor. Shake it. You will see it. You Amen. watch no joke. Wake up in the morning. Monday, Rebecca, one hour. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, but, but, but this, this. <coughs> you will see. I'll preach until you guys see me in the whole world. That's when you realize that this man was serious. Mujakunda. Mujagamba. Hey. Kika nakasaji. Kakaduga. <laughs> Watch. People are going to read my articles in every nation. Watch. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I have my very own. Banda, banda, banda. I never can see the cow. See the Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So somebody tells you, "Oh, oh, oh, you must see you." To jam malako. Just tell them, "Oh, you are holy." Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Guys, that's someone you should listen to. When was it? Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Far. No, it's Wednesday last. Yeah. Holy. Because the the Bible says we're buried with that old life was what? Buried. The life. That dies was buried. The life that fails was buried. The life that does not conceive was buried. The life that has miscarriages, that life died. Katuzala tells you to Jakuzala. Oh, you're far. Am I really talking? Mama, pastor and Sabira here is a seed. Bangami Sula Kuzala. Oh, you Next Hallelujah. Let's go. Then he says, this is David. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. This day. Hallelujah. The Lord will deliver you into my hand. Because I have come in the name of the Lord. How can it fail? This day the Lord will deliver you in my hand. And I will strike you and take your head from you. This is a war of words. How do, how do you tell me? This is, this is the day that I'm going to conceive. I'm speaking to someone. Honey. Get ready. It's gonna head It's gonna get hot tonight. Get ready. You're you're telling honey today to gonna call at you. The day they tell you to Zala, is that very day you look for your husband? This is dead. This is faith. This is faith. I am doing something I've shared with him, and you'll see it on June 28th. I am doing something that is the point of contact to reach the world, and it will reach the world. Because I know what I'm talking about. So, Tozala, you, you have no job. Wake up in the morning and dress up as one with your job. With it, and walk the, walk the whole place. Hallelujah. How oh, you understand what I'm saying? Hey, where are you going? Hey, shut up. Anyway. Ah, faith is foolishness. Foolishness. Do you know what it means for me to say grace to you good people all over the world? You think I'm just joking? Let me just put it there. I'm fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. By faith. So the only way to complete your obedience is to speak to the mountain about God. Not to God about your mountain. David didn't go and pray. Lord, I'm, no, he spoke to Goliath about God. Hallelujah. So you speak to the mountain about God, the knowledge of God. But many of us are speaking to the mountain, I mean, speaking to God about the mountain. I'll give an example. You understand? You're speaking to God about, but he said, speak to the Come and say, you spirit of joblessness. Don't you know that I am the best employer in the world? Don't you know that these companies are fighting for me? You look at my resume. Look at the word. You, you, you even write the word. I told you you write the word. You write the, uh, the applications and the invitations. Don't you even see MTN is inviting me? If I'm looking for a job, if I'm looking for a job, I would have done that. Hallelujah. Amen. 
How many are really making sense? Yes. They say that, it's sort of bizarre, huh? You spirit of barrenness, you, you write no more today, you get it and burn it. Hallelujah. And do what? And burn it quickly. You get my point? Yeah. Now, here is David. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with a sword or spear. Then he says, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. This one has defied the armies of God. This one who has said that I am broke has actually defied the Christ in me. And so I know that the battle is not mine. The battle is for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Simple. He fought back and he completed his obedience fast. And this day I give He brought the thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. He brought those words of the Goliath into the obedience of Christ. That's all he needed. At this moment, Goliath was ready to be punished. The Bible says, So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead, forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the earth, ready to be punished by a good stone. A Philistine? You ask yourself, a Philistine? Man, he threw it in the name of who? Who actually struck the Philistine? Little is much when God is in it. The Bible says, So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him, but there was no sword in there was no sword in the hand of what? David. There was no sword in the hand of the David, but we know that there was a sword in his mouth. The word of God. I don't need a knife. I need a spiritual knife. Which is the word of God. And a knowledge of God. That's why it is important for us to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of God. What's your knowledge concerning that situation you're in right now? What does the word of God say about that barren spirit? What does the word of God say about your marriage situation? What does the word of God say about your job? What does the word of God say about Empeo's Awakam? What does the word of God say about being cursed? What does the word of God say about being poor? What, the word of, what does the word of God say about positioning yourself to get married? And ladies, hallelujah. Remade. So completing your obedience first will mean that you fight to accept by faith that you're not sick, but that you are healed, irrespective of the pain in your body. I don't care how big it seems to be, refuse. <laughs> the numbers in this fellowship are increasing slowly. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm going to show you how. But today I want to let you know that the pain, that disobedient spirit is ready to be punished. And you're going to see it today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll give an example of, of when they called me. And these guys lied to me that I didn't pay rent for about three months. And they wanted rent the following day. Or else I leave. I remember. And in my heart I was like, Eh? Pana ulira batia? Untumusumbo no? Who says he's blessed? Leaving the house because of rent. But here's what I say. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. I began preparing your bed of life and doing my normal things. Hallelujah. And so when I made a call, I didn't make a call from... No, no, no. I knew that I had to complete my obedience. To remind this people that the Lord is my provision. I spoke the word of God. 
This was the stronghold, but this was the knowledge of God. He is my shepherd, I shall not. Am I really making sense? And I got more than the money that I want. I need it. Now, let me tell you something. This is what happens today when I come for this meeting. I complete my obedience first. Because I know that somebody might come with a jobless spirit. And I complete my obedience when I'm praying. Father, I thank you that the jobless spirit is judged. And that jobless spirit is ready to be punished. And you're going to get a job because it is done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because it's a complete obedience. What? First. First. Father, I judge the spirit of miscarriage and I judge the spirit of barrenness. My own shall not be barren. My own cannot have a miscarriage. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you give them a womb to produce children. And that one is already judged and you will conceive in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My own cannot fall sick. And I'm, in, I'm praying for this meeting. Lord, by your stripes, my own were healed. They are full of peace. Their kidneys are working. Their bones are working. Their legs are well. They are healthy. And then you tell me that you're going to fall sick. No, it is already judged. It is punished. All these are already what? By the way, I'm speaking. They are punished. I know from the place that I'm talking about. I completed my obedience first. Until you feel it in the spirit. So, you see, many of you, when you're praying, you can't tell that it is done. Are you been, you, you're praying, Rick and Della Monta, Zeka, 40 minutes, and you feel something in your spirit? Hallelujah. And I know it is done. So I know that the jobless spirit is done. I know that you're going to conceive. I know that you're not sick in Jesus' mighty name because it's already passed. And I'm saying, I know that death, anything that dies, that wants to die in your life, I, I know it and you will see it from today. I've been speaking it. Anything that seems to be dying is coming back to life. I know it. You will, you will live. Your marriage will live. Your thoughts will be bright. Your relationship will live in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say to the righteous Amen. that all is well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, I completed my obedience first. I told you I don't speak until I'm anxious. Mm -hmm. I don't speak until God has said, this is the summer. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I know it. That the spirit of obedience is punished. In Jesus' name. Yeah. I know it. I know it. How can you not get a job? Under this word? How can you not get married? How can you not settle your door? All I'm saying now to you, before you begin your day, listen to me, complete your obedience first. Because now you know what obedience means? Speaking the word of God, right? Yeah. Lord, I thank you for the clients I'm receiving today. Make her labor. I thank you that I'm fearful and wonderfully made. That day is ready to receive me. I, you understand what I'm saying? You speak to the day. Complete your obedience first. Before you enter that job interview, complete your obedience first. You enter that thing and you, now, now they're calling you. Adrian, it is you next. Say, man, teliba. Eka zepa. Yonde I have the mind of Christ. I have a natural from on high and I know all things. Eh? Then you enter. Because you've completed your obedience first. They're going to ask questions that are hard and we'll give you the answer. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> Might even say the wrong thing, but for them, they'll say the right things. <laughs> they, there is a way this thing works. Because how can God confuse the enemies? You've come to fight the enemies and they look at each other and they start killing themselves. You understand what I'm saying? So you go in the interview and you, you, you have a notion from on high, you know all things. They say, no, you, you're saying wrong things. But they're saying right things. Am I really making sense? Yeah. Before you enter that marriage, complete your obedience first. Before you enter that relationship, complete your obedience first. Before you get that job, complete your obedience first. 
after you hear the doctor's report, complete your obedience first. After they've said those, those negative words, complete your obedience first. Then say, hey, by the way, over to Gambach. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Am I really making sense? I wrote here, the word, which is our tool, is ready at hand for clearing the ground of every stronghold and building lives of obedience into maturity. That God has given us the word to build our lives of obedience into maturity. A mature person is one who knows what the word of God says. And they are never moved. You may want to throw me landlord, but let me tell you something. In him, I live and I move and I have my being. Hallelujah. Amen. I told you I'm going to reach the world starting where? In Seda. You understand what I'm saying? So it is important we understand what I'm saying. So, here's the thing. Simply speak the word. Knowledge of God, eh? like David. Speak the word. Speak and speak and speak and speak. You know what I'm going to say. After you're done speaking, speak and speak and speak and speak. After you're done speaking, speak and speak and speak. After you're done speaking, speak and speak. Can you sleep? Tomorrow you wake up. Speak and speak. I am blessed. I am above. I am rich. I am more than a conqueror. I am the best employee. After you're done, after four or five hours, come back. I am blessed. I am more. <laughs> after you're done, a salabaka. I am telling you, this is how you first complete your obedience until you have reached a place where you are only conscious of the knowledge of God and you, and, and you are in agreement with what the word of God says, then you know, ladies and gentlemen, that you have completed your obedience first. You don't have to raise a finger against that spirit. You don't have to raise a finger for it is God himself who will fight. You will speak, but the word will come out that stone will be of what? Of God. Because everything that is of God can only come to you by grace. And it's, so, it's by faith. The Bible says that it might be according to grace. So that the promise might be what? Sure to all the seed. Are you believing to transform the world? That's faith. It can come by grace. Now, you are telling me Right now, that you're still thinking as you came? You're telling me right now that you still think that you're poor? Are you telling me right now that you think you can fail? Are you telling me right now that you think that you're poor? Come on, go ahead and begin to pray right now. Say something in the spirit. I am done. <laughs>